Brian, I think it's neat that we're right next to a tree belt here, and a lot of times when we're talking about this problem insect, white grubs, it gets to be more of a problem when we're along trees. In the adult stage, that grub becomes a beetle, and a lot of times those beetles like to hang out in tree belts, uh, many times along rivers, but not necessarily, but in tree belts for sure. And then we end up with those fields that are next to those tree belts having more problems with white grubs than other areas that we find. So if you find June beetles or June bugs around your farm, this is what we're talking about. Those are the adults. And the white grub, the larvae stage, that's what can do so much damage in a variety of different crops. This bug is big, it's nasty. The problem too is there are a couple different kinds of white grubs. There's the true white grub that could actually live several years and there's the annual white grub that's only going to live a year. Especially when you see those true white grubs, you get a big time problem quite often because common rates of insecticides, things like force, Aztec, capture, they're okay on white grubs, but they're not fantastic. Well, I always think about it this way. The dose makes the poison. And we've got tiny little corn rootworms or tiny little wire worms. Right. You know, they aren't that big of an insect. And so the normal rates of insecticide that we're using are pretty effective controlling them. However, with white grub, I mean, it's 10 times bigger than what a rootworm is. Okay, so let's talk first about the rate. Quite often over the last few years, we've found a lot of people cutting the rate. We've done it on our own farm too. We figured, well, I'm using traded corn. I got rootworm corn. I can go with a half rate of force or Aztec or capture or something. But with white grubs, you've got to have the full rate and you need, I'm serious, the full labeled rate and a good seed treatment like Poncho, Gaucho or Cruiser. And even then it might not quite be enough. So anyway, make sure you're using the full rate. In terms of placement, I would say I want it down in the ground a little bit, probably in furrow. What do you think? Absolutely. You know, there's three different main ways that we're putting on soil applied insecticides at planting time in corn. We're putting them on either band, where we put a narrow band right on the soil surface above where we plant. That works fine for many insects, like cutworms, for example. That's a great way to do it. And you're going to get moisture that's going to move that insecticide down into the root zone over time and give you some protection. Another way to do it would be T-band, where some of the insecticides on top of the ground, but some is in furrow. I personally like the T-band method for most of the bugs that we're facing. The one exception is when we've got real bad white grub issues, then I want all of that product in furrow. So I would use the strongest seed treatment I could get. Maybe it's a Poncho 500 or even a 1250 you may consider in this case. Then I would also put that full rate of insecticide in the furrow and I think we can do okay. It's not going to be great. Uh, I would be hoping for 80% control. Uh, if you can get better than that, that's good. Uh, we've done liquid capture LFR right in the furrow at the strongest labeled rate. And we've seen about 80% control in side-by-side -side strips going through areas where we've got heavy white grub pressure. Not intentionally, but where somebody forgot to flip on the switch and we didn't get the uh, starter fertilizer, but also the capture LFR in furrow. And we saw just nice strips right through the field where white grubs were attacking corn plants. And then the next strip over, they weren't. So it's pretty obvious. We thought the control was about 80% there. I've also seen good luck putting a force or Aztec or Lorsman dry granule in furrow at the highest labeled rates. Uh, these would be ways that I'd try to protect that corn. Yeah, and there's no reason why you can't go let's say Aztec in furrow, and then you could also put capture on if you wanted to double up on it. Well, you have to follow the labeled <laughs> rates right. on these things. And I don't want to do anything that's not right out there. But uh, again, just in terms of controlling that bug, sure. You know, if you could put more of a rate of insecticide out some way, somehow using multiple products or multiple passes, you, know, you could certainly use capture post-emerge in corn. That is a labeled application that could help you out as well. Yeah, but fact, it'd have to be really early because where we're finding this damage is very early in the spring. One last comment I was gonna make, since a lot of people have been reducing tillage over the last few years, we've seen more insects in general and especially more white grubs. We do see a few more around tree belts, but you really could get it anywhere in any field. There are very few soil insecticides that are labeled for soybeans. So then you say, well, I'm just gonna go early post-emerge with capture or something but you've got to get rainfall to get that captured down in the ground and you've got to have a good strong rate. So you've got to use the highest labeled rate of capture, hope for a good rain and do a lot of praying that that's going to stop those very big and very hungry white grubs. 
dig with the shovel and find out what you got going on. I get so many questions every year. Well, what am I going to do about bugs in this CRP ground that's coming out? Because I'm thinking about going Roundup Ready soybeans. Hey, a lot of those bugs can still attack your soybeans too. So don't just feel secure that I'm not going to plant their favorite food, corn. I'm going to plant soybeans. They'll eat the soybeans. Get out there with your shovel. Do some digging in that CRP ground. See what kind of bugs you're going to be fighting and what kind of pressure there is. Well, white grubs certainly can be an issue on your farm, but so can weeds. We'll tell you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next.